I know I've not been consistent and I'm sorry. Yeah, well, if you really love Jesus and you want to tell somebody, say, hey, okay. Welcome back to my channel guys, I know it's been a while, I know it's been a minute but This video probably isn't going to be very long, it's just me explaining why I've been inactive on YouTube and why I haven't been uploading But today is the 23rd of October 2021 and I've not made a video since the 23rd of June 2021 And obviously that's a long time but the reason for why I've been so inactive is because I've just been going through so much Like I've, a lot has been happening around me, like it's just been hard I don't know if you guys remember but at the start of this year I made a testimony video speaking about all of the things that God had delivered me from like masturbation sleep paralysis and more and the main reason for why i made that video was because i was so grateful for what god did for me and i felt like i just i couldn't keep it to myself which is why i made the video and it's funny because some people ask me like david like were you not scared to bait yourself out like that were you not scared to go public about your sin and the things that you've been doing wrong and the truth is i was scared but deep down in my heart i understood that what i had been called to do was like bigger than my fear and bigger than my anxiety and worry which is why i did it in the end okay so after making that video things in my life were good for a while and then after a certain amount of time things started to go downhill but it wasn't downhill like straight downhill it was more like a steady decline steady decline wow things went downhill slowly so that i didn't realize how bad things actually were until a few months had passed so basically long story short a few weeks or months after making that video i fell back into masturbation so now the main reason that i fell into masturbation in the first place was because i felt like i was lonely i felt like i was alone i felt i felt a lot of bad things but obviously as i've grown in christ i've come to understand that one that is not okay and two even if it was okay, it doesn't fix the problem, which is why I stopped and I started to pray against it. I started to, you know, read my Bible. I started to make videos. I've grown as a Christian, so I understand that you can't live in sin like that. So I began to try and get out of it and start to pray again and whatnot. And I'm still doing that now. One thing that I've mentioned before is how the Bible speaks about how we should confess our sins to one another so that we may be healed. And that was part of the reason for why I made the video talking about masturbation in the first place to confess my sin. But as good as it is to be making videos and evangelizing, being living testimony, it has its like drawbacks as well. One of the main issues with being this person that everyone looks at is the fact that it feels like everybody sees me as this guy who, you know, he's a Christian, he makes videos, he probably prays 10 times a day. Listen, I'm not that guy. Although I'm trying to get closer to God and I'm trying to live for God, I'm, I struggle as well, but it's hard to admit that when everybody has a certain perception of who they thought you were, if you get what I mean. So for a long time, I found it hard to admit that I had fallen back into that same sin. It even made me question myself, like, you just made a video on how God delivered you from this and how God set you free from that, but you're doing it again. And to be honest, the fact that I became inconsistent with God and consistent with sin was the main reason for why I became inconsistent with YouTube and why I haven't made a video in so long. People who have struggled with lust or masturbation can understand me when I say that it's very hard to commit that sin and then try and do something for God. It will be very hard for me to be falling more or less every day and then trying to come and make a video talking about how good God is and all of that stuff. It's not easy. But guys, the fact that I'm here making a video today shows you that I've not given up. Do you think I can let the devil win? Come on. One thing that I've seen is that living for God at such a young age, like I'm 17, it's not, it's not easy at all. But just because it's not easy doesn't mean that it's impossible. There's not a single place in the Bible that speaks about this life being easy. This life is not easy at all. But we have God's love. We have God's mercy. We have God's forgiveness. I could sit here all day listing God's characteristics. We have everything that we need. We have each other. Some of the most important people that we have are our friends and our family. Like I'm blessed to have the kind of friends and family that I have because they were the people to encourage me when I was down. They were the people to tell me to continue going when I didn't even really want to anymore. And if it wasn't for them, I definitely wouldn't be here making a video. The thing is with me is that no matter how busy I am, if I want to do something, I'll do it. Like. If I want to make a video for God or if I want to encourage people, it doesn't matter how many tests I have or how many exams I have. Like I'm in year 13, I, I really don't have time like that. But if I want to make a video, I will make one. So the fact that I've gone this whole time and I've just been ghosting shows that things have not been good, but that stops now. I don't want this video to be too long. So the last thing that I'm going to speak about is endurance and how important endurance is as a Christian. It says in the Bible that those who endure till the end will be saved. And that just speaks about how as Christians, like in this walk that we have with God, 
those of us that can push through, those of us that can rely on God, that can trust in God in every situation, those of us that survive till the end, we will be saved. And I don't know about you, but I need to be saved. I know that changing your old ways and changing the life that you used to live, it's not easy, but you really need to ask yourself, would you rather live for God now and live an eternal life in heaven or live a fun, sinful life and it not be worth anything in the end. After committing the sin of masturbation or committing any other sin, it feels like God has moved away from us. We feel like we're by ourselves. But if we actually think about it, right? Let's say this is God and this is you. When you commit a sin, it feels like God just leaves, right? But one thing that I've come to understand is that God remains the same. God does not move. God does not change. It says in the Bible that God is the same yesterday, to, yesterday, today, and forever. And so that shows us that he doesn't change at all. But when we sin, it's not that God is moving away, it's that we are pushing ourselves to the side. Even if you haven't dealt with masturbation before, we've all dealt with something so we can at least relate on some level. And I know that it's easy to feel like you want to give up. When I was stuck in that sin, I felt like I wanted to give up. I felt like, I gave up, man, I'll be real. I get, let me not even come in and start lying. I gave up. I was like yeah i'm not doing this anymore i can't so for anyone who feels like they're stuck for anyone who feels like they're in a place that they don't like for anyone who feels like nothing is working if you're stuck in sin if you're stuck in in problems whatever it may be that you're going through right now listen open your ears because i'm talking to you your sin is not a reflection of you just because you can't see what you want right now doesn't mean that it's not gonna come you might be stuck in sin right now but that sin is not stronger than you and God will never give you something that you couldn't handle. Things in your life might not be going to plan right now, but God has a specific plan for everybody and for you. Stop condemning yourself because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it helped you in any way. I will try. I will try to be more consistent. I hope I explain myself well because I know some of you might have been thinking, you know, where did he go? Did he quit YouTube? God forbid. Even if you don't take anything else from this video, take this. If he can change me, me that I was depressed, me that I was heartbroken, me that I was lost, with all of the nonsense that I was dealing with, if he can change me, then what is it that he can't do for you? Wait, 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 one last thing before you go. This is really important. If you are not born again, you are in danger. If you are not saved, you are not safe. Becoming born again means that the Holy Spirit is given to you by God and now dwells in you the same way that you now dwell in God. Becoming born again means that you want to leave your worldly desires and worldly lifestyle and give everything you have to God and to Jesus. It doesn't require a ceremony, it doesn't require any big thing, you just have to say a prayer wholeheartedly. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son and that he died at the cross of Calvary that I might be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I ask you right now to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and will worship you in all the days of my life. Because your word is truth, I confess with my mouth that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did that, I'm so happy for you and you just made the best decision of your life. If you did, be sure to message me. Be sure to message me.